Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm so glad that you are with us to worship this morning remotely in this way. And I'm happy to announce that this will be our last time filming in this way. Next Sunday, the 21st, we will all be back together in the church. I'm excited about that. I hope you will come and be a part of that. We will have all of our procedures and protocols that we had before about every other pew and wearing our mask and signing in for res and making reservations. So uh, look for announcements in the newsletter this week, but I look forward to seeing your attractive faces behind your mask on the 21st. Our opening hymn today is number 691. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that we may live, that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look in it, at it, and live. So Moses made a serpent of, of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Give thanks to the Lord, whose mercy endures forever. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord, for he for is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the Father. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the, the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Lord, tell me your ways. Show me how to live. Guide me in your truth. Teach me, my Lord. I trust you all day long. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, this is a great lesson from the Gospel of John. I could preach a real good, feel-good sermon off this Gospel reading today. I could receive lots of emails from you all this week telling me just how much you enjoyed that sermon. And I like that feeling. Who doesn't, right? But you know, that's not really my job. My job is to challenge you and help you grow in your faith. I'm supposed to ferret out details and poise questions that make you think about the scripture in new ways, living ways. Because scripture, you see, is alive and well. And God is speaking through it to us today. And the reason that I could feel, preach that feel-good sermon today is that we have perhaps one of the most comforting verses in all of Scripture that you get in the Gospel of John in our reading today. One that each of us can recite or at least recall when we hear it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. With a verse like that, anyone would understand if I preached on what God is giving to us and saying nothing about what is expected of us. And leave it with that. But I can't as much as I would like to. Y'all know that I often wrestle with my sermons for days. I think and I pray and I try to figure out what verse, what word or what message God would have me bring out for you on any given Sunday. Often this Wrestling fills my every free moment and even keeps me up at night or wakes me up in my dreams. But this is part and parcel of what it is to be a preacher, or at least for this preacher. Like I said, I initially just wanted to talk about what God gave us, 
how generous God is. And this is where that wrestling began. It occurred to me that in our country, right now, and for the last couple of decades, there has been what has, is known as prosperity ministry. Prosperity preachers preaching a prosperity gospel. Many of them have those mega churches you've had about, heard about, or maybe even visited or seen on television or in a podcast. They teach that God gives us so much and wants us to be happy and prosperous. They say it makes everybody feel good, but I call this easy preaching. I'm a little jealous at times of prosperity preachers because I guarantee you that they rarely get fussed at for their preaching on a challenging topic. There is nothing wrong with a prosperity message as long as you don't stop there. You see, folks, I do believe that God wants you and I to be happy and successful, but and you knew there was going to be a but, didn't you? He also wants us in his service. That's the rub, isn't it? A relationship with God is a two-way street. We are not here just to be entertained. That's what I believe all this talk about, being in the light or being in the darkness, is about in today's gospel. Ask yourself a tough question. In normal times, how often did you find yourself slipping in after the procession had started or slipping out right after communion? Or how often did you sit way back on the edges, somehow limiting your contact? Are we just on the fringe of things, on the edge of the light of Christ? Would you do that at a sporting event? I don't think so. You, would want, you wouldn't want to miss a minute of the action, and you'd want to see right up front, wouldn't you? You see, Jesus is that way too. Having a relationship with him is like a full contact sport. No half measures will do, but there's one big difference with this sports analogy that I'm on here. You and I pay the price for our sporting events that we attend. Jesus paid the price for our ticket here. It is my fervent prayer that when you're able to return to this beautiful sanctuary, you will appreciate it in a new way. The pandemic has opened our eyes to much. I believe it has offered us a chance to deepen our faith and appreciate our worshiping community in a new way. Before COVID, religious surveys asked people about their faith. And in it, they gave categories of how often people attended church, what kind of church they attended. And the fastest growing category of faith was one entitled spiritual but not religious. What exactly? Does that mean? Are people put off from the doctrine of denominations, the dogmatic nature of outspoken religious folks? They want to find God in and only in their own pursuits, perhaps thinking that God doesn't ask anything of us. Now, I don't believe that there's anything wrong with personal spiritual pursuits. I have them myself. 
But there is something wrong with ignoring the fact that God does call us into community. This thought reminds me of another comforting line from Scripture, this time from the Gospel of Matthew, where two or more of you are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of you. Wow. There is actually something prescribed that we can do to guarantee that Christ will show up. And we're doing that right now, electronically. He's here with us now, folks. I can't get enough of the presence of Christ, and I seek it out as much as possible with one or more of you. As the time comes for us to gather again, let us appreciate just what that means. Jesus will be amongst us when we gather again. Now, God calls us to remold ourselves, folks, change our lives for Jesus. Maybe, just maybe, we've come to realize that God has done more for each of us than anyone else ever has, ever. And I'm pretty sure that's why most of you are watching this service today. Each of us has something that we can do to further the kingdom of God, to be a part of the light that John speaks of. You may not know what it is. Maybe it's helping to build a church or a school in a faraway place like Costa Rica. Maybe it's volunteering with hosting guests for Marines Haven at our church. Maybe it's singing in the choir. Maybe it's something else that none of us have thought of or have done here at St. Anne's before. I don't know what it is you are to do, but I'm willing to sit with you and prayerfully help you discern what it is that God is calling you individually and us collectively to do in his service. But make no mistake, folks. He is calling you to do something. This is a list of many hands-on ways of servicing God. But there are also many expressions and seasons in life of service. You do it when you contribute financially to God's mission here as well. You do it when you pray for St. Anne's and the people who are a part of it. You do it when you invite or welcome someone to be a part of this flock. As strong as this may sound, it is my prayer that God will give you no rest or peace until you have experienced the love of God in the person and work of Jesus Christ and that you have responded in some new and exciting way to his love. No rest, folks. Amen. all please stand and turning to page three in your bulletin join me in the reaffirming our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, Light for light, true God for true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation.
salvation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can become the product of the Virgin Mary, as we may now. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the four words for the church. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We will believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light shine upon them. We praise you for our saints who have entered into joy. We also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. And let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, guys. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I have another thing to say about next Sunday. Um, not only will you be back here um, praying and receiving communion, you will also be singing. Believe it or not, the new guidelines allow us to sing with our mask on. And so we will have the hymns printed in the bulletin for you. And you may follow along with our choir, um, with all the social distancing. But won't that be nice to be able to lift up our voices again 
um, in music and worship to our Lord. It's a great thing. Uh, I'm sure you saw the newsletter from this past week. I got my shot. I feel like Superman. I'm so super excited about that. Um, uh, and it was, it's, it's a huge relief. And I know for all of you that have found your way to your first or second shot, or maybe like me, the one and done shot uh, from Johnson Johnson, you feel you just like a, a brick has been uh, taken off of your chest. It's a wonderful thing. Um, let's see what else. Oh, thank you all for your great response to the Maureen's Haven guest night that we're having here on March 23rd. We filled up all of our volunteer needs in a matter of a day. So uh, we will have our guests here um, for the first time uh, spending the night on March 23rd. We will serve them dinner. Uh, they'll spend the night in the basement of the parish house and then uh, we will serve them breakfast and they will be on their way. Um, we will be having 10 guests and there will be a host uh, who will be spending the night here. Uh, one of our parishioners, Crosby on Renwick, actually, will be spending the night um, uh, to, to watch over them. Uh, it's so good. It's, it feels great to be able to reach out in our community in this way. Um, thank you all that have volunteered. And uh, if you didn't get a chance in March, we're going to do it again in April. Uh, so uh, I, I, just give me a call and I'll put you on that list. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues at the top of page six in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and he offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found at the bottom of page 8 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of the body of blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember that the world is a far too dangerous place for anything but truth, and far too small for anything but love. And now, my friends, go in peace, and may the blessings of God be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 690, verses 1 and 3. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.